Um, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is vowed to continue supporting Ukraine, but Ukraine's forces, they're outgunned, they're outmanned, aren't they, as Republicans still uh, continue to block this aid. How can Ukraine even try to turn the tide in those conditions? Uh, very, with a lot of difficulty. Uh, Ukraine's really up against it. On the one hand, uh, waning, uh, dwindling Western attention. Uh, yes, still a will, a political will, perhaps, to help Ukraine to the extent that they can, especially here in Europe. But at least on the U.S. end, uh, you have, despite there being enough votes, at least on paper in Congress, to unblock the $60 billion in, in further military aid for Ukraine. That's not happening because Republicans, right-wing Republicans in the House, who literally are taking their marching orders from Donald Trump, uh, are refusing to bring that aid to a vote right now. So it is not just on hold. Perhaps it's not going to happen in, in, in the very imminent future. Maybe it will. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so in the absence of that, Europe's forced to mobilize everything. The U.S. has, Lloyd Austin announced, is scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're literally dipping into Pentagon on stocks, pulling weapons off shelves that they couldn't do before. They're using savings from other contracts. So they're taking weapons out of the Pentagon, $300 million uh, dollars worth, sending those immediately to Ukraine and replenishing those stocks with money saved from other defense contracts in the U.S. Meanwhile, here in Europe, you have Germany stepping up with another 500 million euros, roughly, uh, pledging a lot more uh, artillery shells for Ukraine that they desperately need, but also um, all sorts of transport and armored uh, tanks and other weapons. Weaponry. So obviously welcome aid, and you have a big Czech initiative. Czechs are looking for 800,000 artillery shells, trying to go anywhere they could get them, even beyond EU suppliers, outsource them. So you have Canada signing on to that initiative. You have Finland signing on to that initiative. So that's helping. But like I said, they are far from being able to repel the Russian invaders, let alone drive them all off the territory, the, the 17 to 20 percent of Ukrainian territory that they occupy. Uh, and in the meantime, Russia using ever more, in, and you could say creative forms in quotes of technology such as glide bombs uh, to strike at Ukra Ukrainian cities, if not with impunity, at least with a lot of audacity. And of course, uh, this comes as uh, Vladimir Putin no doubt is emboldened by uh, these election results. Do you think he will use those results to ratchet up his aggression even more? Um, I don't think he will. Um, I know he will. And I know it not because I'm uh, uh, clairvoyant. I know it because Vladimir Putin has said it. He campaigned. This is his forever war. He is going to. He has clearly said, why should we even think of negotiating with Ukraine just because they're running out of ammunition? Uh, his economy right now is about 30 to 40 percent of the budget devoted to, uh, to military spending. That's not going to uh, dwindle anytime soon. This is a militarized economy. Uh, this is an economy right now that is focused on that war, even if uh, Putin is also paying lip service to domestic uh, internal uh, services and infrastructure and all that. But very much this is Vladimir Putin's war. He is full throttle ahead. He has even said right now, he has said that the veterans of war, he would like these people, the people who fought in Ukraine, to be what he sees as the new elite to replace the so-called old and disgraced elite. So the so-called siloviki around him, the, the security forces, the people who've always surrounded him, these people are going to play an even more prominent role as if they weren't already in Russian society, uh, those who are the most fervent supporters of Putin, the most uh, fervent champions of his assault on Ukraine, those are the people that are going to be considered the new elites in Russia, given priority, given promotions, uh, given the spotlight going ahead. So far from looking for this thing to ratchet down, to subside, we are going to see a war effort ramped up with a Vladimir Putin emboldened by that victory in a falsified election by most international observers' standards, and of Vladimir Putin, who is determined to go full throttle ahead. He has his legacy uh, look on the horizon to take care of, and he sees himself, he sees himself as having the full-throated support of the Russian population, even if much of the rest of the world begs to differ with that assessment. Doug, thanks very much, Doug Herbert, our uh, international affairs commentator on France 24.